Hey guys, so in this lesson we're going to be practicing what we have learnt over the last few lessons. So the three questions we're going to do in this particular question are over here. You can pause the video, try it yourself, and then you can fast forward to the part where I show you the answers. Or you can just sit back and have a go while listening to me explain. The first question says determine A1, but let me first explain a few things. We've got a 10 volt battery, by the way this is the symbol for the battery, or well, that's technically a cell, but I'm just going to call it a battery for now. Then these over here are light bulbs, so they are some type of resistance. Then I've got a voltmeter connected over there, I've got an ammeter connected there. Note, remember the ammeters must always be connected in series, whereas the voltmeters must be connected in parallel, because the voltmeters have a very high resistance, whereas ammeters have a low resistance. And so the first one, the first question says determine A1. Now remember A is current, and so we're typically going to use this formula. You only use these formulas when they start talking about energy and charge and things like that. Those aren't, the, those aren't very common questions or formulas to use. So if we want to work out A1, now remember A1 is the current, and we said that the current is the same everywhere in the series circuit. The only place where it might change a little bit is when it splits up over here and over here. But then it will join back together again and then it will carry on as normal. And so we know that I is equal to V over R. Now we have got a voltage value on the table or on the diagram and that's 10 volts. But you've got to ask yourself, is that 10 volts for the entire circuit? Well yes, because that's the battery. And so which R must I use? For example, you can't just go use this 2 ohms because that 2 ohms doesn't match with that 10 volts. This 10 volts is for everything and so you need to use the total resistance and so that's this one, this one and this one and this one. Now that doesn't mean you go add all of those together. Why? Because these two are in parallel and they, remember parallels when two lines go like this, and so they need to be calculated in a different way. Remember we said that 1 over R parallel is going to be equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2. So the 6 and the 2 are what I got from the diagram. You then type this in on your calculator and so 1 over R parallel will be equal to 2 over 3. And so then you just switch this upside down and then you switch this side upside down and so R parallel is 3 over 2 and in decimal form that's 1.5 and so this entire part of the circuit is the same as just having 1.5 ohms of resistance but Kevin how can that be this resistance is so high yes guys but remember what we said is that when you've got electrons arriving here then not all of them have to go through the 6 some of them can go through the 2 and some of them will go through the 6 and so when you have two things in parallel it actually makes the overall resistance very low. Now what we can do is we can add this number plus this number plus this number. So we can call that R total, resistance total is going to be 2 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 and that's going to give us 5 ohms. So now we know the total resistance in the circuit and we also know the total voltage and so we can use our formula. And so V is 10 and R is 5 and so that's going to give us 2 and then the unit is amps. So we've done question A1, it's 2 amps. Question V1. Now V1 is a voltage and so what I like to do is I go straight to the formula and I get V by itself so V will be equal to I times R. Now you need to look what you have in this part of the circuit. Well you have the resistance so we have R. What is I? Well remember we've just worked out I which is the current over here at A1 is 2 amps but remember at all parts in the circuit the current flows at the same speed. Remember when the spy ran out in front of those five electrons and told them guys we're gonna have a fridge, a TV and an oven and so we need to be able to run at a constant speed. The only time that you can't use the 2 amps is if you are somewhere in one of these two branches because maybe 1.5 amps goes this way and 0.5 amps goes this way so that the total is 2 
but you don't know how much goes through each one. But as long as we are going through the main circuit, which is this part over here, then that's also going to be 2 amps. But Kevin, don't we go this way? No, guys, remember a voltmeter? It's like those things that have a red and a black wire to measure the volts, and they have an extremely high resistance. And so everything's going to go through here. And so this part of the circuit is called series. It's only when we split up into parallel, that's when you have to be careful with your current. So we can use 2 amps, and so we can get the voltage by saying 2 multiplied by the resistance over there, which is also 2, and that's going to give us 4 volts. So V1 is 4 volts. The next question is for V2. So V2 is a voltage, and so V is equal to I times R. Now the current flowing over there is still part of the main circuit, and so over here it's still going to be 2 amps. Remember, the current just tells you how fast the electrons are flowing, and they're flowing at the same speed everywhere. It's only when they go into parallel, that's when you have to be careful. And the resistance over there is 1.5, and so that's going to give us 3 volts. I decided to add three quick questions just to add on to this a little bit. So now we want to find V3. Now V3 is connected across this branch over here. Now remember what we said, so we've got a 10 volt battery, we've just worked out that 4 volts get used over here, 3 volts be get used over here, and so there is how many volts are left over? Well there is 10 minus 3 minus 4, and so that gives us 3 volts are left over. And so we said that when you are in parallel, voltage is the same for both. So you're not going to divide this by 2, what it means is that V4 will be 3 volts and V3 will also be 3 volts. That is very important that you understand that. Voltage in parallel is the same and if there's 3 volts left you're not going to say 1.5 and 1.5. Now here's where things get really interesting. So now we want to find number 6 which is A2. So A is a current and so we can use I equals to V over R. Now A2 is only this branch so what is the voltage across there? Well we said it's 3 volts and the resistance is 6 and so that's going to give us 0, 0,5 amps. Now have a look how interesting this is. If we had to quickly go work out the current going through this branch then we would have to say I equals to V over R where the voltage across that branch is 3 and the resistance is 2 and so that would give you 1,5 amps. Now look at this, if you take 1,5 amps so, so well, let me first say this, what we had here was the total current, which was 2 amps, and then it splits, 1.5 goes this way, and 0 0.5 goes that way. But the point is, is that your total current will still be 2 amps, so that when it gets to the end over here, and it joins up again, you will once again have 2 amps. And so that's it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching.